We've been gathering a collection of the best cross-country race bikes for our upcoming group test. And Scott has kindly sent us their latest Spark RC. So this is their race version of the Spark full suspension bike. So we're gonna unbox it today, build it up, and then talk about what we've got. Here we go. So first of all, the new Scott Spark was built around one thing and one thing only, and that was to get Nino Schurter onto a 29er. But up until now, he wasn't able to get the really, really low handlebar height that he wanted on the 29er version. So Scott changed the style and changed the RC frame to create a much lower front end so he could get that handlebar down. And it was done in time for the Rio Olympics because they wanted to make sure that he was on that 29er for that point. And as you probably know, he went and won the gold. And as a bit of a bonus as well, Scott also had the winner of the women's event, Jenny Risveds, riding the new Scott Spark as well. So instantly, they had a winner on their hands. The Spark range at the moment, if you take into account all of the wheel sizes and all of the frame sizes, there's probably about 150 different variations. So it can get a bit confusing. But the RC range is specifically based around cross-country racing. So as I said at the start, we're going to be doing a group test pretty soon on this and the Scott Spark RC is one of the most exciting bikes for this. So the RC, which stands for Racing Concept, is built primarily around the one by group set and 29er wheels only. So that's all it comes with. So there's no provision for a front derailleur on here. What you do have is you do have a really cool little Scott chain device here. It only weighs 23 grams, but certainly gives you that little bit of peace of mind when bouncing over the really rough terrain that your chain won't pop off on there. So if we look at the frame itself, obviously full carbon, you know, all of Scott Spark RC frames are full carbon. The rear shock is trunnion mounted to allow a longer stroke. This allows them to be able to control the compression a lot easier on this than on the old version. So you've got a much more tunable rear shock on there. By shifting the position of the rear shock, it's actually allowed Scott to put a bottle cage on here. So now there's a mount for a proper full size bottle. So not just a small stubby one like you'd get on some other frames. Uh, we'll talk about this in a second because this is is actually a quite interesting bottle cage if there is such one but we'll come on to that in a bit. We've got a completely redesigned rear triangle so the old Scott Spark had a rear triangle made of about 18 different pieces so lots of different pieces added weight on there now this is made of only three pieces so they've dropped about 130 grams off the overall frame weight just by changing that rear end on here. Um, as part of that as well, obviously you can see there's no pivot at the rear end, so they rely a lot on the flex in the seat stays. As part of that, they've put the rear brake actually mounted to the chain stay on there as well to allow this complete seat stay to just flex as it wants to be. Even the linkage plate, so this small area here is now full carbon as well. So pretty much the whole frame itself is a carbon fiber construction. As I said, it's been completely redesigned. So Scott has had that chance to tweak things a little bit as well. So the new version now is a little bit longer in terms of the reach. So reach on this large frame size is around about 456 millimeters. So it's pretty close to a trail bike there rather than a cross country race bike. Uh, also, the head angle is 68 and a half degrees. So again, this is slightly on the more relaxed side of a cross country race bike as well. Um, same goes with the rear chain stays as well. So we've got shorter chain stays on here. So even though they've got the 29 wheels, they've brought that in. So it makes it a much more faster handling bike. So we're now down to about a 435 mil chain stay on here. They've got a 740 mil wide bar. So that's quite a good thing. So it's not as narrow as a lot of the cross country bikes. Uh, not quite as wide as something like the 780 bar that comes as standard on Giants Anthem, but it's a really, really good width for most use on there. Uh, also, the Synchros stem has got quite a unique shape on here, so the only thing you have to be aware of 
is if you do want to sort of change to a different brand, all of the spaces, everything are designed to mate with that stem, so you'd have to swap everything on there. Uh, but the good thing is, is Scott have reduced the length of their stems that they've put on their cross-country bikes. So this one now comes with an 80 mil stem on this large frame size. So that shorter stem is a step in the right direction to get the best out of the handling of this bike. The parts on the, the team version are obviously sort of quite high end. So what we've got on here is we've got the SRAM GX Eagle group set. That seems to be a relatively staple group set found on bikes of this sort of price point. We've got level TL brakes. So the level is the more cross country and trail based brake. The L stands for the fact that it's got the lever control so you can actually adjust that movement quite easily on here. Because it's a cross country race bike, uh, you haven't got massive rotors, but the good thing that's that Scott have got on here is they've actually put a 180 mil rotor on the front. So you do have a bit more sort of reassurance from that stronger braking on the front there, combined with a 160 mil post mount rear on this as well. And then obviously we've got a Fox Floats 32 step cast performance version to match the nude rear shock on here as well. So we've got front and rear suspension sort of nicely balanced on there. The other thing to, to note with the Scott bikes is, as you're probably aware, they like to use remote lockouts. So the twin lock on the Scott Spark RC has actually got three settings, uh, reducing the travel from 100 millimeters. So this bike has 100 millimeters of travel front and rear. So from 100 millimeters down to 70 millimeters in the middle setting, down to a complete lockout or as Scott liked to call it, going from descend to traction control all the way through to climbing. So you've got that and there's the lockout actually is connected to both the fork and the rear shock as well. So when you click it, it adjusts both at the same time. So you've got a balanced suspension no matter what setting you've got. So no fiddling around for anything there as well. So Syncross uh, provided not only the cockpit, so we've got the handlebars and the stem, but also seat post the saddle and the wheel set themselves as well. So what we have here is we've got uh, Syncros XR 2.5 wheels. So quite a lightweight wheel. It's not a wide rim on this. This is definitely one based around cross country racing. Um, this is matched as well with the Max's Aspen tires on here. These are only a 2.25. I say only um, compared to the, the wider tires you would often find on a trail bike. This does seem quite narrow these days, but for cross country racing, the good thing about this narrow tire is obviously you've got a lighter weight carcass and you have more clearance as well for mud. So we talked at the start about Nino shirt and not being able to get the handlebar height he wanted on the old 29er. Uh, what Scott has done on here is they've actually reduced the stack height of the frame by about 17 mil. You can see at the moment, it's fresh out of the box, so we've still got plenty of spaces on here, but there's a lot of scope for getting that front end as low as possible. You've also got a negative rise stem, as you can see on here, so that, again, is going to put your weight a lot further forward, but that's the whole point of this bike. It's a race bike. It's designed to go as fast as possible over a cross-country race circuit. Your comfort isn't necessarily right at the top of your demands, but the great thing is this package should actually allow it to become a comfortable bike as well. The other nice little neat thing that Scott has specs on their bike here is they've got a Syncros bottle cage. Now, as I said, these aren't really the most exciting of things, but what this particular one has got in it is it's got a little toolkit. So not wanting to be outdone by people like Specialized with their SWAT system, a Scott as combined with Syncros here to not only provide you with a bottle, but if you just pop out these little bits here, slide it out and in this little compartment you've got a nice chain tool and you've got a little multi-tool there as well so you've got everything you require that can actually help you while you're out on your race so the only thing that it doesn't have with it as standard then is a pump and a spare tube or whatever talking about spare tubes the nice neat thing that Scott have done is they spec everything tubeless as standard. So this bike came to us ready set up with sealant in there. So you only have to pump up the tires and away you go and effectively you're ready to race straight out of the box. So again, one of the things I said earlier is Scott provided a huge range of different variations on the Spark. This particular one is the Spark RC900 team. Uh, this currently retails at £3,599 in the UK. Uh, and as I said, it's towards the bottom of the Spark RC range, which sounds like a lot, but when you consider you've got that 
race winning pedigree there. You've got the full carbon frame, GX Eagle and the Fox suspension. It's overall a really, really good package. The other good news as well is Scott actually offered this particular bike in a Contessa version. That's the female version on there. Uh, it does actually come with slightly different wheels, but effectively the rest of the spec is exactly the same as on the 900 team. So there you have it, the Scott Spark RC900 team. So as I said, we're going to put this up against quite a few other bikes in our upcoming group test. So we can't wait to get it out on the trails and give it a thorough thrashing. So thanks for watching. And if there's any other bikes you'd like us to unbox, uh, please feel free to put it in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to keep on top of our latest video releases.